Hello to you. My name is Maria Kondzielska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. I have to point an alert at the beginning of this episode because it is not easy to talk about philosophy and especially about philo Polish philosophy in front of the camera and it requires a little bit more of deep thinking and analysis. Today we still talking and mentioning Stisław Augustynek, one of the most important professors at Warsaw University in the 20th century. And with me in the studio is Marek Kondzielski, one of his former students. Hello, everyone. And I would like just to draw a map of philosophical schools and statements um, especially when it comes to analytical philosophy and where we should point and put Zdzisław Augustynek in all of this. So uh, Augustynek should be put in the same stream as, for instance, uh, Bertrand Russell. So this is analytical school in its naturalistic stream. An analytical school can be characterized by using logic and logical analysis and mathematics in philosophical investigations. Well, Augustinek was pupil of, of Professor Melberg, who is another important figure in, in Polish philosophy. As I mentioned, Augustinek was deeply interested in philosophy of space and physics when he contributed a lot to the development of this discipline. What is interesting that in Poland, uh, philosophy of science was pursued mainly by representatives of the church, and we had two of them, uh, Professor Heller, who was a, a priest, who knew Augustinek uh, papers and who admired them, who considered them as a good analytical work on the grounds of philosophy of science. And, and we had Józef Rzeciński, who was a grand bishop uh, of the church and who was also interested very strongly and in, in a very professional way, it must be admitted, in the philosophy of science. So maybe this, a deeper relation to God just simply leads you to, to cosmology. This is interesting <laughs> that church perceives uh, contemporary philosophy, contemporary physics as something important uh, in, in a culture, something that has influence on a doctrine, something you have to cope with and something you cannot ignore. While contemporary uh, uh, philosophy uh, not necessarily considers philosophy of science as its mainstream. But still, Augustinic was considering those characteristics of uh, space and time. What is interesting, he found that Immanuel Kant was the philosopher who already declared that time has all the same features as a line in mathematics. And this is very deep because this involves that time has on one hand some topological characteristics and on the other hand some metric characteristics. What is uh, important and what, what is worthwhile uh, considering that even if we accept certain ontologies and solutions uh, which are feasible on the ground of physics, we still don't decide upon uh, everything. I mean, we, we cannot understand properly everything on one hand because if we are analyzing the development of physical world from the Big Bang until the present moment, we can see that after the Big Bang, if we assume that there was a Big Bang from which the physical universe started, there is a time called Planck's time after which our equations that describe what has some uh, physical meaning. But before this time, which is very short but definite, uh, all our equations either equal zero or go to infinity, which means that they bring no information about physical status of the world. So we know nothing about this. About and the first few seconds. Yes, about the, the first few moments, them. let's say, <laughs> of the development of physical world. And coming back to uh, the concept of time, it's a question whether time is infinite with no ends or it had 
some beginning, this implies many other problems also on the, the ground. Also the beginning of, of the materia, yeah. Yes, so in, in one of the theories, uh, time had no beginning. I mean, it started off together with the, the, the Big Bang. This produces uh, another problems on the grounds of causal relation, as I mentioned, because we cannot explain everything. It, it, it seems to, to be some relation between our understanding of the world, in philosophical terms, some relation between epistemology and ontology, uh, which are interrelated. Uh, Augustinek was not very fond of this. I remember when I was preparing a thesis about the Kant's theory of time and I had to apply some topological analysis and metrical analysis to this. Uh, I did a lot of uh, uh, a lot more because I found some uh, explanations to what was considered by St. Augustine. So uh, I found on the ground of biology and medicine that how our mind construes image of reality is that that what we perceive as now is actually 0.3 second of time that is not definitely a cross section of space time continuum so we perceive the world in already in a different way we have some concept of now which has a dimension which is contrary to analytical uh, analysis of uh, concept of space-time physics, uh, of space and time continuum. Definitely, everything what we see is already um, a little bit of the past because we, uh, because light needs to get to our eyes and it takes time, of course, very short time, but still time. Yes, so this is, this is another issue that everything we observe is somehow in the past. And how to look in the past is just to look to the stars. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, on the grounds of, of uh, theory elaborated by Augustinek, he claimed that it is not so that what is in the past already does not exist and what is in the future is not existing yet. It simply exists in other part of space-time continuum. Well, this is important. We may say that as we exist here and now in this studio, it does not imply that there is nothing in, in the next studio. Uh, so in or this in the way... other possible world where we, for it's example, not talking about right possible now words. about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about possible words, honestly speaking. But it says that if anything has ever existed in the real, in a physical world, it's still there, but simply in other parts of space-time continuum. Yes, it's a famous and what all students of philosophy need, a worm of time, which has different dimensions and different parts of it. And of course, it's, it's very interesting, but it, it, it's a discussion which takes us back to a class at the university. And I hope everyone who is interested <laughs> in doing something like this will basically just attend a philosophical lecture. But what is worth mentioning that Stisław Augustinek was also a thinker uh, going to the ontology and not only staying in language, for example, or analyzing as many analytic philosophy, philosophers tend to do and like to do, just avoiding ontology at all. And of course, he was not doing it. He was treating ontology very seriously. And that's something very important also for him, not only worth mentioning his, uh, his point eventism and ontologies and papers which he wrote. So, Marek, thank you very much for thank having you. this discussion and I hope we will analyze and talk about other Polish philosophers in other episodes and maybe again in time. And I hope also I it encourages other people more to analyze it and like it and know it. And to all of you, thank you for being with us and we send you to read more about Stisław Augustinek. Thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture.